So I had a question come up in my comment section, and uh, you, can, you can pause to read it. And what the person was basically asking, um, he was uh, talking to somebody about some uh, uh, making hydraulic hoses, and uh, you, I, I think you either misunderstood or he just didn't know what the hell he was talking about. But yes, you are correct. Um, fittings are fittings, uh, depending on what style they are. Like this would be a JIC style fitting, and they are pretty much standard throughout the entire industry. Uh, where, where things differ is uh, hoses and how they crimp on. Um, I think at the end of the video I got I got a scrap piece of hose around and we'll crimp a fitting on it just to uh, show you how that works. But um, yeah, so that, that's actually where the dies, the different dies come in. So like I said, I'm not sure if you misunderstood them or he just didn't know what he was talking about, but that's what we're, uh, that's what we're talking about today. So um, start off uh, JIC, uh, it stands for Joint Industry Council, there, there's history behind that. And basically all that represents is a fitting with SAE threads on it and a 37 degree uh, flare on it. Um, that's standard for all JIC fittings. And um, yeah, then you have um, other other fittings such as uh, seal face O-ring fittings is what I call them. Uh, let me get a let me get a plug for them. I don't stock those because I don't really use them that much, but I do have the plugs for them in case I need them. So this is a cap and a plug for a seal face O-ring fitting. Um, you can see it's flat, it doesn't have a flare, and it uses an O-ring to, um, to seal the hydraulic fluid into it. And on the other end, this is the cap, and I mean, of course, these would have holes through them, and there were hose, and you just crimp them together like that. Personally, I don't like seal face O-ring fittings. One is because uh, people tend to over torque them, especially if you're used to uh, JIC fittings. JIC fittings, you can, you can pretty much reef on these as hard as you can give them, and uh, you're not going to have any problems. But if you over, to uh, over torque, excuse me, a, um, a seal face O ring fitting, you could deform the O ring, and over time it will actually um, cause the O ring to leak, and then you got to go in and replace the O ring. And speaking of the O ring, you cannot replace these O-rings with just a standard O-ring. You actually have to have a seal face O-ring uh, O-ring and um, because if you use a regular one it's just not going to fit inside that groove right and when you crimp it down it's actually going to going to deform the O-ring a little bit and in a pinch you can use just a standard O-ring that fits pretty much but it's one of those deals where yeah just get it run and then tomorrow I'll come back and fix it the right way. So that's it for seal face o-rings um i'm just going to speak to sae stuff i don't know if i said that before but i'm just going to speak to uh, sae stuff here uh it's it's what i use and it's what i know um yeah so uh next thing would be like a um npt which stands for national pipe thread uh national pipe thread is pretty much the stuff you have in your house that screws together and it's basically this is a plug for a um for a pipe plug i should say and um basically it's just uh the threads here and it comes on a taper so the way that seals is in in combined with uh, some kind of pipe dope or um, Teflon tape things things like that um, the taper as you screw it in it makes it tighter and it gives you a, um, a seal uh, the pro problem with these is and I don't like these either especially in hydraulic applications is is that they just don't seal that great and you really got to crank on them and then they, they they get stuck. I don't like these. I mean, if, if it's my choice, I'm picking any fitting to put on the machine that I was building. Lights just went out. Um, it would be it would be a JIC fitting. Now, last but not least, um, would be Boss fittings. Now, Boss fittings have actually the same thread as JIC. They're just standard SAE thread, but uh, instead of having a a flare, a 37 degree flare, on the end, it uses a O-ring. Um, these are actually not that bad. You, you, you find these a lot sticking out of function manifolds and valves and things things like that and they screw in and then normally they'll have a JIC or a seal face or something on the other end where you could put the hose into. Uh, hydraulic tanks you see these a lot on but um, yeah like I said these, these, are, these are pretty good. I, I don't mind these and uh, some, some places like to some manufacturers like to use MPT on their on their tanks and again it's just asking for a leak whereas to these uh, worst case scenario you just got to replace an o-ring uh, you find that a lot uh, again you can't use a standard o-ring you can in an emergency but there are specific boss style o-rings that you have to use on these 
so this is my my cap and plug kit uh, I've, I've accumulated these over over years of work and um, just kind of give you an idea of the variety of sizes they come in uh, this would be a number four uh, which is a quarter inch I'll explain that in a little bit but um and then it goes I mean God, I don't even know what size this freaking thing is. This was this was what I call a bad day. If you gotta pull a pull a cap and plug out that size, JIC. So, but um, I think this I think I actually had to get this for a um, I think it was a backhoe blew a pressure line. That, that was not a good day. And uh, then you got the old big old seal face already seal face uh, type fittings now when we're talking about sizes um, and you'll have to forgive me the graphics department had off this week I, I'm the graphics department um, you got they generally range like this four six eight and ten now the number represents how many sixteenths again this is SAE so four sixteenths equals when you reduce it down to one quarter. So a number four hose is a quarter inch hose. And then you go, oh, wait, four sixteenths. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Six sixteenths equals three eighths when you reduce it down. And then so on and so forth. So that, that's basically what you're talking about when we when we say you got a number four hose with a number six fitting on it, number six female JIC fitting. That that's basically what we're talking about there. So let's crimp a fitting onto a hose. We'll show you how that works. And um, I got a piece of hose that was left over on a roll, a little shorty piece, and a and a fitting that somebody tried to throw away. But I'm a hoarder, so I grabbed it and threw it into my junk bin. And uh, yeah, we'll do that, and I'll explain to you how all that works. So before we get into pressing the fitting on this thing let's actually talk about the uh the hydraulic hose um this is a number four uh double braided hose uh it doesn't the section i have doesn't have the uh psi rating on it but uh 5000 psi the reason they call it double braiding is because there are two layers of braided steel i don't know if you guys can see the two different layers there but You'll have to trust me if you can't. There's two layers of braided steel. So basically you have a, a rubber inner hose, um, some braided steel, and then that's wrapped with another uh, wrap of rubber, then another uh, section of braided, and then the outer jacket, which is also rubber. Hose for hydraulics, uh, they vary as much as fittings. Uh, you have single braided hose, which I think goes up to like 2,500 or 3,000 PSI. I really never see that. Uh, you have low pressure hose. You would see that on something uh, like, a, like a transmission cooler line or something like that. Uh, you also have plastic hose, Parflex, Sinflex are a couple of uh, uh, brand names. Uh, I personally hate that stuff for my application. They, they, it just it doesn't hold up as well because it doesn't have any steel inside. The uh, the outer the outer jacket tends to crack on it. And um, yeah, so I mean that that's basically it for hoses. This is this is a pretty boring end of hydraulics. Not that not that the rest of this isn't boring. Now a couple of quick tips for actually replacing a hydraulic hose. Uh, first and foremost, make sure this is a mistake a lot of people make. The hose that you that you're making matches the length of the hose that you are replacing. Uh, you, you you basically a lot of people don't account for the different sizes of these fittings. Now these these brands uh, different brands will have different lengths as far as as far as this overall goes. So you need to match the uh, the overall length of the hose, including the fitting. Uh, not just the overall length of the hose is, is what I'm getting at. Another thing, uh, as far as getting these fittings on, um, what I like to do is you can see right here, see how that kind of flips out like that? If you don't remove that, that makes this getting this on all the way a real pain in the butt. So what I'll usually do is after I cut the hose, use a cutoff wheel, of course, um, or you can use a hacksaw. I've seen people do that, but it kind of kind of makes it kind of mangles it up. So it's better off just to use a cutoff wheel. But what I like to do is once I cut it, I'll hit it with my my right angle uh, little little mini die grinder, and then just chamfer that that edge down, which will make it go into this fitting a lot easier. And uh, lastly, um, what you need to do is 
line up the hose for how far it's going to seat inside the fitting and then I like to put my thumb like there and then you get yourself a white marker and mark how far the hose needs to go into the fitting to um, be seated all the way. Um, sometimes you got to fight to get these in and you think you got them seated and you don't know and that that little white mark right there just lets you know you got it in all the, all the way and a lot of mistakes people make with these is they don't seat them all the way so they end up just blowing out and last but not least is, is lubricant um, it's probably probably pretty important in just about everything you do in life um, WD-40 works and, and pretty much anything that's that's wet and slippery will work and uh, yeah just just hose down the inside of the fitting and then uh, you press this in I usually like I got I keep a little wooden block so that way there I could really really smack it in but I'll, I'll show you that in a second but uh, yeah that's pretty much it And there you go, you can see my little white line there, so I know I'm all the way in. And uh, yeah, now we're good to go to press it. Now, as far as the press tool goes, um, this is the one I use, it's uh, made It's made by Parker. Uh, you, you buy hoses and fittings from Parker and Parker pretty much just gives you these things because you're buying their stuff. Uh, this one, this is pretty standard as far as I, as far as I can tell. Um, most, most field mechanics, uh, use this style and I, I think it's just because it's it's pretty much portable and it, it's simple to use so I, I i think that's that's probably the reason behind that but I, i've i've got no problems with it i use this with my old company um, i've probably used been using this same style of press for over over 20 years so it works out pretty good now um you were talking in your comment you're talking about dies now uh this is where where the miscommunication might have came from uh the dies actually apply to the different size hoses not the different fittings so i mean you really can't see it too much anymore it's it's worn out here but it all the dies are color coded now this particular one i have in here now this is a that's a yellow die which is a number six hose, which is a three eighths hose. Uh, I'm doing a quarter inch hose, so I need the red dye, which you, you can't see because it's uh, it's it's worn away. One thing before I put the dye in there, it's a good idea to just to give a little bit of a little bit of lube on the side the inside of the dye there. And when I put this in, you're not going to be able to see it when it's actually in the press. But when I put that in there, uh, you're going to see... Let me uh, touch this to make sure I can see it. You cannot. Kick this down a little bit. There we go. You're going to see me lining something up. And these dies have this little lip right here. So when that die is in there, you need to line that lip up with, with the edge of the fitting. If you go too far down, it's going to over crimp it, which is bad. And if you go too far up, it's just going to, it's, it's not going to crimp the top of it. So it needs to be all the way down, pressed up against that, that little lip right there. Let's drop that guy in there. And what I like to do is put the thing in there Let me get this box out of the way that box is for Monday's job I kind of like to just push it down like that just to make sure everything's sitting in the right place so uh, let me let me adjust the camera and we'll get we'll get things set up for you all right now we got the correct die we got the plate we got the enter pack we got the leaky pilot valve on my compressor that I'm never gonna fix Let's get to it. So I like to slip it in just so I can start feeling that lip that we were talking about earlier. And then we'll press it down. Now 
now I like to make it so it's just starting to grip so that way there I, I could check see everything's aligned right and I could feel that that lip is grabbing the bottom of that fitting which it is so I can move it now we're gonna press it down so basically this touches touches the bottom of the press and that's it And there you go. Lift to release. And the hose comes out the bottom. Now what I'll do, I'll get a file and I'll just whack this down just to make sure there's no, no sharp edges on it. But uh, as far as making a hose goes, that, that's pretty much it. So that's about it for me. Um, another video successfully produced in the back of a van I'm, I'm becoming bang bros for mechanics but uh we learned about hydraulic fittings we learned about how to make a hydraulic hose i think we call that a success uh i'm sure i missed a few things and i'm sure i got a couple of things wrong uh any questions as always leave them in the comments and uh, i'll try to answer them the best i can and uh yeah thanks for watching <laughs>